you're listening to the Appleton Ria Podcast, a podcast dedicated to understanding the latest tips, tricks, and techniques to be successful in today's market of real estate investing. Appleton Ria Podcast. Get ready. Here's the next episode. Hello, hello. Once again, you are listening to the Appleton Ria Podcast. I'm Dan Allborn, and with me, as always... Jackie Conkle. What, what? What's going on, Dan? Hey, we are here for another podcast, and the whole point of what we're doing here, guys, is to help you. Um, is if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, we give you real estate tips, but sometimes we just give you real life tips, right? How to become a better human being at the end of the day. <laughs> but here's what I'll tell you. We need that. You become a better human being, you'll be a way better real estate investor. Because uh, real estate investing can be a phenomenal tool, but if you don't use it well, it can destroy your life. That's true. We've, we, we know many people that it has done exactly that. So you have to have the right balance of life and business. And I think we do that in the Appleton Rhea podcast because the Appleton Rhea is a chapter of uh, Life and Air, which we've talked about as well on right this on. podcast. But today, as we head into the festive time of the year, Jackie, oh. tis the season, right? Tis the season for everything, right? Everything right. happy and jolly and a little bit of freak out mode for, for some folks yes. with the end of the year coming. Um, and the new year beginning is exciting. You know, and then obviously we also have people who are struggling this time of year because of all the people they've lost. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I, I definitely want to um, throw a bit of a shout out, if you will. Yeah. You know, understanding that this is a really hard time of year for some people, too. You know, but recommitting to ourselves and to the things that we say we want, that we've told ourselves we want, that maybe we've even been letting ourselves down. And sometimes it happens um, because we fall into, you know, a stage of maybe sadness because of things that have happened around us. Or we just, you know, maybe we tell ourselves we want something that we really don't want. Well, right. And you got to decide. And as the holidays can be a time of remorse, obviously, because it's, it's, you have family and friends that you're so used to seeing. And if they're no longer with you, you have that. But as we turn a new calendar year, you know, a lot of people like that as a fresh start, right? You always Absolutely. hear of the silly New Year's resolutions, which we <laughs> all know just don't work, right? The last two days. We, you have the good, good intentions, right? Sure. You have all these big ideas. And it's not always just as New Year's. Sometimes through the year, you have like this great idea of whatever that may be like i want to get out of debt i want to lose weight i want to get a new job i want to make more money i want to spend more time with my kids we could just be here all day making Giant lists list. right um and these are commitments that you make yourself they're, yep. they're good things that you want to do but why is it they don't last i don't know let's get into it that's what we're going to talk <laughs> about here today is we want to help you make commitments that last Right. And I know that with the coaching that Jackie I, and I do, you know, we deal with a lot of people. And obviously, we all struggle with this. We're not immune to it either, oh right? I gosh. mean, let's be honest. We're no. human beings. Uh, but there are certain things, tips, techniques that you can do that can help you really be more effective with your commitments. And what you're going to find, you're going to be able to get more things done in less time. Yes. Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to just really... I mean, time blocking. We talk about that. That's maybe one element of this piece of the puzzle, right? It absolutely is. But that is. isn't the be-all, end-all because time blocking is just one piece of the puzzle, right, Jackie? It is, and that's what I think, you know, sometimes sounds like an easy answer, right? right. And uh, as I was sharing with Dan a, a little bit ago before we hit the record button, I mean, I've been working with some of our students over the last couple of weeks and, yeah. and finding out, you know, they're like, they want time management and, and it goes back to, okay, time block, right? right. Or they... They're really trying to hit a goal and we break it down to the action steps. And then what do we do? We take those action steps and we time block them and we put them in our calendar. What I'm finding as the feedback is they're like, okay, I did it. Mm -hmm. I decided what I wanted. I broke it down to the action steps. I put it in my calendar. I set an alert. The alert goes (laughs) off and I hit ignore. Right. And then it went off again the next day and I hit ignore, whether it's working out or you know i want to build my business so i'm time blocking for marketing or i really want to get closer to my creator so i'm going to get up early and i'm going to read you know the word and i'm going to you know pray or i'm going to hang out with god for a half hour whatever it is right um it could be business it could be personal but it's like here's my ultimate goal i'm going to break it down to action steps i'm going to take those action steps i'm going to put them in my calendar and i'm going to time block but then when it comes you're hitting ignore so is that happening for any of you out there right now? Mm. You know, I think so. Sure. I, I mean, I know I've struggled with that in the past too. Haven't we all though? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the core reason, Dan. Right. What happens? What when we go back and we say, okay, why? And I'm gonna I'm gonna stop myself because yeah. we don't want to say why do I hit sure. ignore because now yeah. we're gonna get 
the negative yeah answers, absolutely right so we don't want the negative answer. why am i not doing that well because you're lazy jackie because you're stupid because you <laughs> you're useless like right. i don't want the answers to why am i not sure. doing that yeah but i want the answers to what will make me do it yeah okay now i have to go back and say do i really want what i said i wanted yeah do i actually want that right Right, and then we go back into our why. Yep, absolutely. Right? And, and that's I, the strongest part of that. Dan. Well, I think too, part of it is is that sometimes are we living our why? Because sometimes we create whys that are other people's whys because it's what other people want us to be. Going back to our shoulds. Yeah, right. Yeah, we talked about it. we had a podcast. <laughs> Stop shooting on yourself. If yeah. you want to listen to that, this ties into this specifically. But a lot of times we're living up to the expectations of other people. Yep. And that's it's like, well, I, I should do this because everyone else does this. Yep. But does it really benefit you? Right. Maybe it does. Maybe, maybe it, does. it does. And you have to push past the pain, right? And for anything to do something different, it's a new pattern, it's a new habit. Yeah. You have to create that new system in your life because exactly. we are creatures of habit. But I think to your point, it's going back and really, is this really important to me? Yeah. And is it something that, okay, so some things someone else can't do for you, like working out, right? right? But maybe if it's a business thing, if it's something that you just know you're never going to do, right. you know you need to do it, but you're just never going to get yourself to do right. that specific marketing or whatever, mm -hmm. or picking up the phone and yeah. calling someone. Is it something that you can delegate to someone else to do? And maybe is it just something that you keep saying, I need to do this and you're never going to do it? You can't delegate it or don't want to? Right. Maybe you need to eliminate it. No, that's true. If it's not a core competency your of your business of like being important, Yep. of generating phone calls and leads and specific with real estate, yeah, you know, either you have to do it or someone else has to do it. And then realize, okay, it may be a financial commitment or maybe you can work out some type of deal with someone where they're working on a commission basis and it's based upon they're doing some work with a payday later. It depends on the individual you're working with, but you have to know what the core things are and why it's important. Mm -hmm. Why is it important you have leads coming into your business? Because you want to make money, right? And if your phone's <laughs> not ringing, you can't find a deal right? right so it's important that those tasks that are generating leads for your business happen and there's millions of marketing things oh and that's not what this podcast is about but there's millions of ways to get people to contact you to tell you that they want to, they want to sell their homes exactly right. but you still have to do the activities this it doesn't do. magically happen and say oh okay i'm gonna do cold calling today and you don't cold call and be like yeah i didn't get a deal this month yeah. well what were i mean it all goes back to well, what were your activities there's two things you can control your attitude and activities and with the Rest attitude piece, into place. with the attitude piece, it's when you get excited, when you initially mm -hmm. have that epiphany in your mind, you're like, ah, I want to do fill in the blank. Like I want to be fill in the blank. I want fill in the blank. At that moment, you are at a point of excitement, mm -hmm. zeal, something sparked in your body why you thought that was important to you. You need to kindle that fire. And then maybe go back to that fire and mm -hmm. put wood on that fire to continually go back to that moment in time because that's what keeps you to drive through. Because we talk about this all the time with our students is the that grind. Life, the grind and life happens, yeah. right? Stuff comes at you sideways that you would have never expected and yeah. it throws you off your course. But if you have that fire still burning, it, it's like going back to on a cold day. It's winter, sure. right? <laughs> it warms you up, right? Yes. It gets you back to the familiar. I like this feeling. I like the warmth. I want to yeah. be warm. So then it goes back to the activities and the attitude you need to have to get back on track, to do the things that sometimes is tough. And then instead of hitting ignore, <laughs> you get up that morning yep. and, and do the deed. Or you, when it comes up on your calendar, you're reminded, like, oh, I got to do this, this activity. This is what I'm doing. I have to do this. It's a must do, can't fail, right? Right. But you, you want to get to the point where you see that come up in your calendar where you're like, I, I get to do this. Yeah, that's I can't true. wait to do yep. this. So again, changing your questions of, why am I not doing this? Why do I keep ignoring it? How about what's going to get me to do this? Why? What happens if I don't do this? Sometimes that question helps, yeah. right? What happens if I continue to click ignore when it comes up saying I'm going to work out today? Right. What does that look like in the future? Do I want that mm -hmm. more than I want to not work out? No, I don't. Right. So I'm going to just do this. So sometimes, you know, it is the tough stuff. It is. And, you know, vice versa sometimes it's things that you know going back to the should and it's yeah. stuff that we really don't want right. and, and again our why is so important and you guys Absolutely. we've done so many podcasts and so many talks about why and and why comes into a lot of sure. our other podcasts because right. it's the driving force it's, it, it's it that really core is burn. I, I was gonna say that is a foundational piece of any bit of success yep. in anyone's life professionally and personally because if you don't have that core why behind mm -hmm. you do the things you do you just become that drone worker bee that gets almost lulled to death doing the same activities over and over, never questioning, well, why do I do that? 
Right. And, here's and your life where, satisfaction is, is at zero. It is. And, but here's where this comes in again. Mm -hmm. Good is the enemy at great. Yeah, for sure. So if you're comfortable, it's really hard to motivate yourself to right. be better or to get better. You're right. But I also want everyone to just sit back for a second and decide for yourself, is comfortable just okay? Yeah. You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with being comfortable. Yeah. You don't have to go be great. Yeah. If you're happy... Mm -hmm. Why be great when good makes you happy sure. and great makes you miserable? Because you, there's nothing more right. demotivating than constantly seeing things pop up in your calendar and not do them. Right. You just feel stupid, useless, right. whatever, worthless. Like, why do I keep, again, asking the question, why do I keep not doing this? Maybe just take it the hell out of your calendar mm -hmm. and just decide that you're happy. And that might be where the shoulds are coming in. Right. Someone says, well, you should keep building your business. You don't own enough properties. That's not enough right. cash flow every month. You're making 10 grand a month. You should be making 20. But what if you are happy right. at 10? Sometimes it's okay to stop. No, I get that. And, you're and that why isn't there? Absolutely. And again, you're not competing with anyone else. You know, just compete it's, with it's, yourself. It's the same thing in real estate. Like I do X amount of deals per year. Well, who cares? Who like cares? I don't care if you do 100 deals a year or you're doing 10 deals a year. Are you or, happy? Or yeah, or you do three deals a year and they're really good deals and it pays for you and your family and you live low off, the, you know, you don't yep. have a high need per month. I mean, there's so many ways of looking at this, but I guess what I get at is this, is that if you have those things that are causing you pain, hurt, or you're just, you're stuck in a, in a habit, like case in point, a lot of people listening today aren't full-time invested investors. They would like to be, but they have a, the nine to five job. Mm. If that nine to five job is a drain to you, you know, it's not like you can just stop tomorrow and be like, I quit my job, right? right. You need that to provide for your family. I get that. But what you could do is reposition the way you think about it. Okay, I'm going to give my job six months. Yep. And in this six months, I'm going to put a plan together to give me an exit strategy to leave my job. And then you can use a tool like real estate investing or yes. any other tool. There's a lot of other income generating revenue tools from online to whatever. You find something that sparks an interest for you. Yep. We chose real estate, right? right? But then you put that plan together and then you have that work that plan. And when the days get tough... You're like, what's the alternative to what Jackie said before? Yeah. What happens if I don't do What if you this? don't do this? Well, you're going to continue working your job and you're already miserable there. So how about you don't be miserable anymore and do the tasks necessary to get you one step closer to freedom, right? Yep. yep. And I mean, that's, and we worked with a lot of students yeah. and not just in real estate. Right. We've worked with a lot of students that that's exactly what we've done, Absolutely. right? We've set up that plan and they've left that job and oh my gosh, the happiness, yeah. right? So you almost have to envision that yeah. future, whether it's six months from now or whatever you set up for yourself, but mm -hmm. you have to be able to have that vision of what that looks like yep. to keep you going. Yep. And Dan, you did this journey with your um, working out and eating Absolutely. different and yeah. you changed your life. And it wasn't always easy, yeah. was it? But no, it's not whole, easy. What if I don't do it? And the right. vision for what you really wanted, and you actually really right. wanted it. Yeah. And you put those things in mm -hmm. your time block in your calendar mm -hmm. of preparing meals and eating right and working out yeah. and saying no to sweets and all the yeah. things that you did. And I, it, it's just you, 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 you kind of like. I think the best thing of what Jackie analogized this is like, what if I don't do this? You mm -hmm. know, like even today, I didn't work out. I was planning to. Life happened to me this morning. Guess what? I didn't do what I was going to do this morning. But I also know the feeling, how good it is. After I'm done working out, I know mentally I'm like mm -hmm. tied into like, I can be so productive after a workout exercise it's that I, can, day. I get so much stuff done. Like yesterday I worked out, had a phenomenal day, was, was really busy, but it was all good busyness stuff. Stuff that I'm helping <laughs> people. I met with individuals. We're planning. I mean, it was a cool day. But I'm saying in the days that I don't do that, I know then I'm just... Maybe not on top of my game. So I know the feeling that I want to be at in my peak performance of how I can be present with my family, yeah. with my business people, and any other inter interactions that I have that I can serve them the best. And I know I'm optimal when I do this task, even though it's tough. I get up in the morning, yeah, I'm slinging around weights, I'm sweating my sure. butt cheeks off, and you know, and, and <laughs> it, it sucks. You know, I enjoy the after effect of the sure. workout. I don't enjoy the actual workout itself. I like the benefits. And that is almost an endorphin rush. Oh, yeah. way. Yeah, for sure. The grind. And the health aspects, and I feel better, I look better, sure. I can do things, I'm not huffing and puffing around upstairs. Things like that are important, you know? Yeah, and so you focus on that. Correct. And then you go and get it done yeah. because you're focused on that benefit. So if you're time blocking things that don't move and motivate you in that way, again, just revisit those things. And if you know you're just never going to do them, 
take them out of your calendar right. because it's so demotivating to just never go do them. Yeah. So I'm asking everyone out there that is going through these things to just reevaluate everything that's in there mm -hmm. and then give yourself the why and motivation to, you know, what's going mm -hmm. to motivate me to do this mm -hmm. and what happens if I don't do it, right? Those yep. are the two things that you can do that yeah. will move you forward in those aspects. And again, it could be personal, it could right. be business, it could be whatever. And then, then you time block. Yes. Then you go back and then you put it in your calendar because now those blocks of time have meaning. Yes. Because if you just like put in your calendar, work on real estate business. No. And you don't have definition and a why behind it. Yeah. That's, I'm going to say 99% of the yep. time you're hitting ignore or you find something else to do with your time or your schedule magically gets filled with whatever. YouTube, or TikTok, says, or a friend coming over, <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be. Or if it just says, hey, from one to two, I work on marketing. Well, now you just spent 45 minutes. Now it's 145 and you right. figured out what that means. <laughs> right. I need you to say what exactly yes. you're doing. From one to two, I'm calling leads. From one to two, I'm, I'm you know, disseminating lists yeah. or I'm filling out mailers or right. I'm designing a mail piece or whatever. It has to be a specific task. Right. It can't say from one to two, um, I hang out with my kid, you know, or from right. one to two, I, I spend time with my family. Mm -hmm. Like what is spend time with my family? From one to two, we're outside throwing the ball or from, yep. you know, it's gotta be a specific task yep. because you're gonna waste half of that time in that time block figuring out, okay, I'm doing marketing. What yeah. piece should I do today? It needs to be absolutely delineated. Absolutely. And then you can say, oh, it's one o'clock. It's time for me to do yep. that. And I'm just gonna punch it out. And at two, I get to go do something else. Yeah. And then it's like, I get to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And whatever it is again business or personal mm -hmm. from one to two i'm doing you know legs and and abs right. you know or whatever yeah. it is yeah. like this yeah. is what i do on this day yeah. i'm not just it says go to the gym like okay now i'm at the gym now mm -hmm. what what body part am i yeah. working today like if you can really delineate it out yeah. you're good and I think, Dan, the most important part, you just said mm. you didn't work out today. Right. And you're already thinking all the things like, I'm just, the day isn't uh, kicked off. Like right. I don't have as much yeah. energy or motivation. Yeah. I feel bad. I, I, I didn't do what I said right. I was going to do. Mm -hmm. But you, and I know you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're already like, it's okay. Right. Like I'm still, I got this day. I'm going to make right. the best of it. And tomorrow's a new day. Yeah, and tomorrow I'm going to work out. So I yeah. already know that it was one day yep. and, and it's okay. I gave myself permission to be Give like, I'm not going to work out permission. today. But I'm not going to then not work out anymore because that's sometimes And what don't happens. beat yourself up about Correct. the missed Correct. one time block. Yeah. Like tomorrow's another day yeah. and I know you're, yeah, I absolutely. know you. So I mean, it's, yeah. like you said, it's getting that concrete reason why you're doing what you're doing, blocking out that time, being very intentional yep. and delineate specifically out the tasks you're going to do in those calendar moments that you, that you put in your calendar block out. And I think the last piece is, and we've talked about this before, sometimes it is a little bit of a regurgitation, but Having an accountability partner, right? Oh, Having someone yeah. who can really hold you to the fire, you mm -hmm. know, um, and that, that someone who meets you at the gym, who you're not going to let down because you'll let yourself down every day, right? Right, <laughs> right. right. Or when just, it's hard. If you have we a week will. of commitments that, you know, you have yep. three big things, three big rocks you're trying to move this week, yep. and these are the three tasks you're going to do, have a normal, maybe have a cup of coffee with someone, or you get on a phone call, or do a mm -hmm. FaceTime with someone, and like, hey, here's what I did. Yep. Here's what I here's why I didn't do it. Here's how I'm gonna do better next week. And just having someone who can truly and honestly not allow you to cop out. Yes. Not be like, oh, it's okay. Yeah, you had a busy week. I mean, you don't there's times for that, but I mean you ultimately have someone who needs to kind of hold you to those sure. goals and hold those to those those commitments that you can see move forward. Yep. And you may not hit all of your commitments each and every week, but here's the reality of it. You'll if hit you hit more. If you hit one or two, you're moving in the right direction, right? And having mm -hmm. that person as well can help you stay focused on the bigger goal. Because these weekly things are just kind of those benchmarks to get you to the ultimate goal. Whether it be, I wanna lose 20 pounds. I wanna leave my job in six months. Right. I wanna have more quality time with my children. I want them to be able to respect and love my, I wanna love my wife more. Whatever those things are, um, it can be down. tangible, can be tracked, and also can be a plan they put together. And there's so. two big things, right? I love the accountability, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a partner bringing that in, but two big things. One, don't beat yourself up when yeah. you don't do it. Just move on, right? Because right? that's negative, toxic thoughts, and it just brings you down. Yeah, remove And it. number two, celebrate your wins. Oh, and yes. again, another regurgitation, right? Yeah. But never forget to celebrate your right. wins. If you're just moving on from thing to thing to thing and you never stop and appreciate what you've accomplished, Correct. then it's always a to-do list. Absolutely. And decide when you stop. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be 
ever going. Right. Like, yeah. stop and smell the roses. Enjoy mm -hmm. what you've done. Enjoy what you've created. And, and you know, just, like, bask in Absolutely. it. Absolutely. No actually, matter what it is. You know, we talked about business. the 12-week year. I mean, that book, the whole idea behind that is there is a week between those 12 weeks that you just do nothing. Turn it off. You basically reflect, yep. enjoy, and then plan again. So you do need to step out of things from time to time. It's okay to give your time away. It's okay to regroup your thoughts and then hit the target again. You know, it's like an archer. You may not hit the bullseye right out of the gates, but what do you do? You wait, refocus yep. back in, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get yourself dialed back in, and that's okay. Just stay focused on the goal. Don't step away from the archer, you know, from, from, the, bullseye, <laughs> from the bullseye, right? Yeah. So, Cool, guys. Hopefully this was helpful. You know, I mean, I think it's fitting coming into this time of year with the New Year's setting oh, quasi-resolutions. But really, this is something as you set commitments throughout your year, you Absolutely. can re repeat over and over again to keep you focused, getting more stuff done in less time, and really hitting some of those, those uh, obligations and commitments out of the park. So, well, hopefully we can see you at the next Appleton Rhea meeting. You go to AppletonRhea.com. All the information is there. You can become a member. We have amazing local vendor partners that you can work with, network with, save yourself some money. And, of course, the amount of business that's done in that room alone, just meeting local other investors, can help you sharpen your tools and become more efficient in, in what you do in your craft. So, until we speak next time, guys. Thank you so much for listening. You've been checking out the Appleton Rhea Podcast. I'm Dan. She's Jackie. See ya. See ya. You've been listening to the Appleton Rhea Podcast. For more information and other episodes, visit us at AppletonRhea.com.